saying, hey, guys, let's. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Not trying to push either way to say, hey, it's this or it's that. But oh, just I... saying, hey, guys, let's try to get some information out there. So I, got um, you. I, uh, I just want to say thanks for taking the time and, 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 and helping these guys out. And uh, uh, totally respect you for that. So thank oh, you. Oh, ha happy to do it. And I figured the, the documentary had something to do with this. Almost every class that I ever talked to, that's where it starts. Yeah, it's like, oh, we no, it's, yet... it's on the syllabus. It's like, OK, yeah. sure. We have yet to watch your commentary that you posted, I think, a few weeks ago or whatever on your YouTube page. But. Oh, OK. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. All right. So, all right. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I did a live commentary. Yeah. That's right. I went. You're right. Thank you for reminding me. I think I did that this year. Uh, yeah. Where I did a uh, basically a, um, a cast member commentary. All right. Anyway, hi guys. Hi. All right. What? Why have you summoned me, little hobbits? <laughs> so, uh, for just to start off, do you believe in flat Earth? I absolutely one hundred percent put it in a certificate you can frame. Believe in flat Earth. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, why do you believe the Earth is flat? I believe in flat Earth, and I know you guys watched the documentary. Hopefully, you retained some of it. Um. I had nothing to do with the production of it, which I probably could have. The um, I believe in it because when I looked into uh, I, I looked into in just about every other conspiracy. I'm not going to mention them for school's sake uh, that you can think of. And when I looked into this one, I thought, well, it's got to be the easiest one to shut down because it's the only one we we teach to kids. Right. When you're in kindergarten, it's like, here's the goal. that's it. You don't have to worry about it anymore which is kind of odd in the first place. And I thought, okay, well, I'll be able to shut this thing down. And after nine months of staring at it and trying to work out the details, uh, and I know you guys aren't pre-law or anything, but I couldn't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. I, I couldn't do it. If I had to go to court, it's like, I'm going to prove it. it's a globe. I couldn't do it. So it's like, okay. So I made a series of videos um, called Flat Earth Clues, and I put them out on the internet and I asked the internet hive mind you guys probably know this which is people are yeah everybody's got their own level of intelligence but the hive mind of the internet misses nothing uh that's why you have uh, websites like moviemistakes.com and crap like that they miss nothing everything you know eventually some guy in his underwear at 3 a.m in Nebraska well where are you guys by the way uh Chicago uh, okay Chicago so not Nebraska um <laughs> the uh they'll, they'll figure it out and the the hive mind didn't pick up on it so there you go uh the hive mind came back at me i asked the entire internet i go prove it show me where it's not it's it's uh it's a globe and no in fact the the question the follow-up i i throw at people is can you prove the globe without using nasa can you do it and it's like oh it's kind of that's kind of iffy because that's the military <laughs> despite what you may hear so anyway go ahead okay uh so we wanted to ask you in the movie behind the curve that you uh, made did the so you know how like they flashed the beam of light and it was like trying to prove like if you do it this far you know yep. we wanted to ask did that like change your view at all like no if, that... if if anything it made me kind of irritated at the guy that did it jaron who <laughs> who's a friend of mine right living out of san francisco and he um what what he did was, and I, I didn't know this until months later, because remember when we when we shot the documentary, we shot the whole thing in like seven months, and it was on a shoestring budget. And uh, Jaron told the guys, "It's like, oh yeah, fly up to, from LA to San Francisco, and and we I've got this laser test I'm thinking of doing." And you saw the first one. I don't know if you caught it. They had to do it twice. The first time he yeah, melted yeah. the laser, just melted it, and so the the spread pattern went everywhere. And then the second time they uh they had to lift it up and i thought that was kind of odd anyway so several months after that test because jaron got a lot of hell for that like you you can imagine right it comes out of netflix yeah. and people just descended on jared it's like what 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 happened dude so he drives out to the it does a live stream and he goes out to the site during the middle of the day that that same very site and he goes and he's walking around he's going oh hey i don't have line of sight which means it wasn't flat to begin with. The, the basically the the site that he was shooting at wasn't flat, wasn't tabletop flat, and and he's going. This is the first time I've actually seen this during the day. It's like you never did a test run. You just called this camera <laughs> team up there, like do it live. But you guys are ever doing production stuff? Never do it live the first time. Yeah. Everything you ever see on stage, everybody does a dry run. Never do it live the first time. 
And so the, the short version is no, uh, it wasn't flat to begin with. And so, which is why we shoot over water, why we shoot over salt flats, uh, why we shoot over ice and, and stuff like that. So no, that, that test had nothing to, uh, it wouldn't change my mind in, in the slightest. So, no. So, uh, what about the gyroscope? Cause it said you guys were doing another test with the gyroscope, but then like, show you guys finishing it. Right. Did that test work? The gyroscope test, uh, it's hard to explain because uh, it's it, if you unless you're into three dimensional thinking, it's kind of tough. Every plane we didn't need the gyro the gyroscope we bought is really not that much different than the gyroscope that's in every single plane you ever fly in. Everything from a Cessna up to a, a major jet, and that is if you've ever and I, I don't know they don't won't do it in astronomy class, but they do it in physics. You can spin up a top. And once it's spun up, you can rotate it, and the center will always re retain its axis. Planes do that. They spin up on the tarmac, which is perfectly flat, and then when they fly, they, they le that lets them know, you know what, what position they're at and if they're level. And that gyro... So what I've... All right, short version, I because let's move on to the next question. But the short version is, does a gyro show that there's 15 degrees of movement in the sky per hour? Yes, it does. The question is, what's moving? Are the stars moving or are you moving? Because up until quite recently, everyone said, oh, it's the stars that are moving, you know, because you're, you're, you're not going anywhere, right? And we say, oh, no, no, it's the sky is just lights in the sky. It's just the sky that's moving. So which is it? You can't prove it one way or the other again without using NASA or some sort of space program. There you go. So the, the gyro now, that didn't, that didn't hurt us in the slightest. The only thing that hurt us was that Bob, uh, you know, the big tall guy, uh, he uh, he was hot mic'd and was trying to keep stuff on the DL with that, you know, and he's like, people forget, by the way, that's a little trick that you'll, you'll know some of you maybe, which is they put a microphone on you for long enough. Eventually you forget the microphone's there. And that's the whole point. They want you to forget, and then you'll say something amazing. You're like, oh, Donald Trump is a demigod, you know, and then they'll use that. <laughs> so I've, I've been hot mic many, many times, and uh, the only thing I slipped up was, you know, you go to the bathroom, and it's like, oh, wow, I'm wearing microphones. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, what's your typical response to people when they say, if the Earth is flat, why can't we see cities across the body of water? Screw them. No, that's not my response. <laughs> uh, no. The, okay. Th that's a good question. Okay. So the, the follow-up, the bigger version of that is if the earth is, if the earth is flat, why can't we see Europe from New York? Why can't you see, um, Japan from California? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because Mount Everest is the, the tallest place on the earth. And the easiest answer for that is because of the thickness of the atmosphere which is what you're breathing in right now looks transparent, looks clear. It's only 99.9% .9 clear. You're, in fact, you're not even breathing in that much oxygen. It's uh, it's less than, it's 20%, we'll just round round up to get out of the trace gases. It's 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. You're breathing in mostly nitrogen. Um, the trace gases, who cares? But why, why is that important? Well, because you're breathing in basically just a thin version of water. And that water gets thicker over distance. It's the same reason why if you see uh, movies about whales underwater uh, or scuba divers, scuba divers, when they go down to 200 feet, give or take, when they look up, they can't see the sun. The sun could be directly overhead. The sun cannot penetrate. Same thing with things off in the distance, which is you can't, I mean, that's hell. You forget about Europe. You can barely see. I think the limit at sea level is less than 200 miles. And that's that's what I'm saying, which is the the curvature should cut everything off way way before that. But if it's a really really clear day and the atmosphere is just right, you can see a long long way, way way further than uh, you should for the curvature of the Earth, which is eight inches per mile per mile. So that's why you, the thickness of the atmosphere, plain and simple. Um, I had another question. Um, with the dome, like, do you think there is an actual dome or is just infinite? Like, just no. That is a wonderful question. And the um, the dome is, okay, so in our groups, let's say it's 70-30. So 70% of us believe in the dome, 30% of us don't. And the 30% of us that don't, more it's mostly they don't like the idea of being confined in some sort of structure. Uh, do I believe in it? Yeah, I do. Um, mostly because of the vacuum problem, which is you'll have to get rid of space. But let's say there was space, right? For example, because we don't believe in space at all. We, you know, you're living in a building that could be sitting on somebody's desk, God's footstool, who knows? 
right? So let's say uh, there is a dome or there isn't a dome. Uh, what happens when the vacuum of space meets our atmosphere? Meaning how they define space right now. I ask scientists all the time, what is, happens at the edge of space? They call it, you've probably heard the term, the edge of space, which is our atmosphere, you know, nitrogen and oxygen eventually gets to vacuum, which is nothing, which is hard to understand, which is like, there's nothing there. Vacuum, everything should equalize. It's one of the laws of thermodynamics, which you guys will learn, which is pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier, straight up. Uh, when you go to pick up propane at the store, right? You have to pick it up in a container. No one's going to say, hey, pick me up some propane, but don't use the container, right? Because the, the pressure will always equalize. Look up anything on YouTube, anything in a vacuum chamber, put it in a vacuum chamber, it would explode, right? The uh, basketball, football, uh, toys, anything pressurized will explode. So what happens when our atmosphere meets that the vacuum? It should just instantly equalize and say, well, no, gravity's holding. It's like, yeah, gravity's not that strong. Not, not, you can do tests of this. Gravity loses all the time. Well, sorry, one more quick thing. I know you're limited on time, which is, uh, let's say there was a vacuum chamber right above you, right? And you pull and there's a valve. You pull it. What's going to happen? It's going to equalize instantly, violently. The air is going to be sucked up there. You may even black out. You may even die, right? So the question is, when you walk outside, why is the giant vacuum chamber of space holding, you know, not ripping off our atmosphere, you know, atmosphere? And your instinct would be like, gravity? Oh, you mean like the same gravity that couldn't keep the air from going upstairs? Very same gravity. It's going to keep everything on. on. Nope, not buying it. It's in, and you say, well, okay, what does that mean? It means that it's a pressurized system. It's an enclosed system. You're living in a freaking snow globe. So how would you explain gravity? <clears throat> because like if it pulled to the center, wouldn't things pull from left to right? Are you Gavin, by the way? Yeah. Perfect. I will send you, by the way, I'll send you because I've been making shorts recently because apparently the kids only watch TikTok. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. 60 seconds. So I've been doing 60 second shorts and I, I did one on gravity recently, which is, but I'll, I'll give you a condensed version of that, which is gravity is a mysterious force, molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a ball in your model. And ours, it's a mysterious molecular force that pulls things straight down. Um, in fact, scientists will you know, will, will eventually admit, if you press them on this, it's like they can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does. They can only tell you the symptoms of it. Meaning, yeah, you know, you, you pick up something, you know, it, it falls, right? That's easy enough, but why does it fall? They can't reproduce it in a lab. They can't create anti-gravity. So what is it? It's like, well, it doesn't really matter because it's re we can we can see it all day long. So the, again, they can just every every major scientist, the, including the the top media scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson, will say, "Oh no, it's a theory. That's all it is." So if it's theory, then we, we, why are you trying to defend it so much? The reason why they they hold on to gravity so much, no play on words there is because it's the only explanation you can say about why our atmosphere is here and why we are stuck to, to this ball. It's the only thing they've got. Without gra Gravity is the cure-all for just about every science mystery that's out there currently. Anyway, hopefully yeah. that helps. But I will send you the short as soon as we're done with this. In fact, I'll send you all, all right. the shorts. All right, and then uh, lastly, to wrap up, I guess, yeah. do you think... Oh, wait, you have a question? Yeah, okay. Uh, what? What's your question? You in the back. What's your question? Yeah. Is there anything that would like prove to you that the Earth is a sphere? Yes. Yeah, there are two things, by the way. Uh, and I, I put this thing out there for two or for, God, four years. There are two, two of them. Uh, first thing is take a GoPro camera, attach it to a rocket that's going to leave orbit, point it down at the Earth. Don't let it detach and, and fly off and, and go back to Earth. And then have that rocket leave orbit. And eventually what will happen is, right, you know, like kind of like leaving a basketball, you know, with a camera, eventually that bat, you know, you, you zoom on the basketball, but as you pull away from the basketball, it'll turn into, you know, a, a sphere, right? Eventually the earth will turn into a globe as that camera goes away. It's never happened in the history of space travel ever, ever, ever for many space organizations. Statistically speaking, should be impossible, right? Okay, fine. That seems expensive and kind of a pain in the ass. The other one would be my spacesuit test, which is put me in a spacesuit. Loan me a spacesuit from any era because they've never failed ever you know, from the 60s up until now. Put me in a vacuum chamber, a university vacuum chamber, pull the switch. Tell me how I live. Tell me how I survive. Because I have asked so many people, I go, what magical thing in the backpack of that spacesuit stops the vacuum of space? Remember how I said that everything in a, in a vacuum eventually expands and explodes? There's only one thing that hasn't. You know what it is? It's the spacesuit. 
wow, that's cool. That's convenient. What, what in the spacesuit does that? Nothing. Nothing. They they won't talk about it. And again, even if you convince me right now in 2024 that there's something right now that we can use to counteract the the uh, the vacuum of space, tell me how we did it in 1969. I know that's way before you guys remember. 1969, we did not have much of jet. We didn't even have computers in 1969. Not not like what you know as computers. So yeah, between and I put that test out there for years. But it's like put me in a vacuum chamber. Put me in a vacuum chamber. They won't do it. They won't even suggest it. And you'd think that some TV program would be like, oh, yeah, put that guy in a vacuum chamber and let him just keel over. Yeah. Dying for a cause. <laughs> so All I right. guess well, to wrap up, I would ask, do you think you are getting closer to a solution uh, to prove that the Earth is flat or like further away and proving that it is a globe? Um. For me, the it's not that we're getting closer to a solution. We are spreading the word enough. My eventual goal is to hit, look this up, the 100th monkey effect, which is once the uh, a group of people get an idea, you know, or any animal species for that matter, get, you know, once it becomes easier to relate, to resonate to a topic than not, then it flips. Meaning, you know, the, the scales flip. So if, if it's actually less awkward to talk about Flat Earth than not to talk about it, then that's when we've got everybody. And that's that's how we've been pushing forward. We're, we just run by leaps and bounds. The problem is, is when we're trying to get celebrities, the celebrities don't want to risk their careers. You know, it's kind of like no one wants to be the first person out there to talk about it. So like when Kyrie came out, oh God, he just got <laughs> leveled. People just came after him. For, for that and i've talked to other celebrities you know big ones there's like oh yeah a Kyrie thing that that <laughs> changed my mind on if i was going to talk about it. now there's still some that are, that are willing to come out and talk about it so anyway yeah we're getting closer but not in the way of proving it we've done all the experiments we're going to do technically without jumping into aerospace but we uh uh but winning winning the numbers game winning through attrition through social media that's that's what we're kind of into right now. And so far, it's been doing very, very well, which is every platform that comes online, everybody immediately gets thinking, you guys, like, I'll give you some of my shorts. I guarantee you some of those shorts are already going to be on TikTok somewhere. You know, they Flat Earth is such a massive topic content wise. I've been doing this for 10 years that uh, it just gets pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. So that's what I'm hoping that eventually I can walk down the street and be like, yeah, Flat Earth. Yeah, we need Flat Earth. <laughs> so. Anything else I can do for you? Uh, I think that's all. Thank you. All right. Hey, Thank Gavin, so I will send you those shorts. Thank you guys very much. And uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank all you. right. Thank you, too. See you. Bye-bye.